I have a quiet apple and a break and I will now reattempt to do the stupid thing and just not even bother with lights now so they can't f my shit up. So yeah. I realized this was a stupid idea. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ren. I use she, her, and he, him pronouns and I identify as tired. Did I treat finishing the tutorial like a bad breakup and immediately cut bleach and dye my hair? Maybe. This has been something that's been on my mind and a long time ago I made a promise to myself to be authentic on the internet so I guess I'll share my feelings about it. The internet loves opinions, right? What could possibly go wrong? I intend to preach to the choir today so if you find yourself being upset about any of the things I'm about to talk about you don't need to listen to me, you don't need to yell at me, don't yell in my comment section. Go yell somewhere else if you need to, I'm not gonna stop you. You don't even have to watch this video if you don't want to. I reserve the right to block anyone from my comment section who brings bad vibes as usual, so yeah. I feel like this is something I need to talk about and it is my job to talk about it because I'm the bitch that made this a few years ago so some of y'all probably owe me figuring your shit out when you did so show some goddamn respect children <laughs> to start this off and I'm gonna look at my stupid script and notes today because I am tired this is my first attempt at filming the stupid video so we're gonna just do this and I'm not gonna give a shit since that video, I have evolved within my gender theory stuff and the system I've been using for the last few years has been my four aspect system, which uh, you might know from my trap video if you've seen that. Basically, you have gender role, you have expression, you have sex characteristics, and then you have identity kind of being like almost like a puppet master kind of connecting all of them. And the issue that I have meanwhile found with this is that like it tries to do the thing that we're trying to get away from which is look at gender as like this package deal way. This identity means you need to also be all of these other things and want all of these other things, right? And that's just not how gender works. So there's not really a point to try and be like, oh, all everything's separate, but actually we're still gonna connect it. And ultimately like identity, it's what you feel on the inside. That shit doesn't matter to anyone other than yourself. Nobody's gonna look at you and see your identity. They're gonna see all the other shit that you communicate via your other three aspects but unless you communicate it to them they're not going to know what your identity is they're not going to know what you feel on the inside the system we've been using the last few years is this kind of very identity focused system which ultimately originated from mostly english speaking online spaces like tumblr and the bunch ideas are shaped by the people and the spaces that come up with them so because this was an online space the kind of physical presence that we have in an online space is going to influence how we're going to interact with it so if we don't need to think about our physical appearance and potential dysphoria and all of those things we're not going to focus on that what we are going to focus on is like the philosophy of kind of what we identify as and what we feel and how to categorize that and kind of like how no matter what you're still valid meow I, in my opinion it gives wrong expectation to the baby queries because it doesn't prepare you for real life as a visibly androgynous person like you can be on tumblr and be told that oh you can identify as a man and still dress femme and still have a vagina and still be valid and that's okay kind of thing but if you walk out in the world like that and expect to be gendered correctly and you get misgendered and you're gonna be surprised about that you are ill prepared for the world right you can tell yourself you're valid all you like but validity is not what your life in the world is gonna be about um meanwhile on the other side you have kind of other communities that have come up with their own systems over the years and like historically and across the whole world including western countries because i feel like there's always this thing of like saying oh other cultures around the world and that just means like cultures other than western ones no not even the western one but because those communities were in real life rather than online they didn't focus on identity they focused on kind of the physical aspects more because basically for the tutorial i did a bunch of research and refreshed some research i've done before the gist of it with most of them is this is your assigned gender and you dress opposite that and then the kind of range of experience is not like you identify as this thing and then the other stuff is kind of a range but this is what you look like and then the range is whether you are just a cross stressor or whether you are a transsexual or in more modern terms I guess whether you're gender conforming or non-binary or trans-binary that's the range 
that ultimately it comes down to in those contexts. And like, both of these systems have their perks and their flaws. Like, it's good to kind of figure out what your deal is and kind of be able to insist on that and be able to be respected as that rather than kind of categorizing yourself with the fellow queers even if they have a different experience for you. But at the same time it's also good to kind of focus on like what people are actually going to see you as in real life and like how you're going to deal with that and safety and practical things, right? Both of them have their flaws and their perks, but neither of them manages to capture kind of everything that is our experience as genderqueer people. So that, that's something, that's one of the things I've been thinking about, but that, that that's just kind of like preamble for other shit I'm about to talk about. So I've adapted my system and it is now a three aspect system and I've just gotten rid of the identity part because ultimately that's feelings so we can just split that up and make them into the feelings we have about each aspect because again they don't necessarily need to correlate so why would we have a centralized version of that? So kind of the workings of my new system is all of the three aspects are separate even if for some people they might line up and we as humans who like patterns and with society's standards might see a pattern in that and might think they correlate relate because they coincide. They are separate in the theoretical at least, even if to you personally they might correlate. All three of them are equal. They're equally important. Neither of them is more important than another one. Thirdly, dysphoria is functionally the limitation of what one's comfort zone is, whether or not one is within that or not. Just if you were to try and leave it or you find yourself outside of it, dysphoria will kick in and it will kick your butt <laughs> for it. Like, I can want to be cool with being a girl. Believe you me, I've tried. But Dysphoria said no. <laughs> Dysphoria was like, no, 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 you don't go here, no, no. And I don't get to pick where my comfort zone is. Dysphoria picks that shit. So that's kind of where I'm at with how I conceptualize gender for context. Now we get to what I actually want to talk about today, which is non-binary and how that is being used and defined these days because we have left the correct path. Non-binary has always been an umbrella term. An umbrella term for everybody who falls outside of the binary, as the name suggests. The binary is this idea that gender is a package deal where you're either man TM or you are woman TM and anyone who falls significantly outside of that should be able to qualify as non-binary. So this definitely includes for gender, agender, pangender, and gender fluid people. Non-binary leaning men and women as well, because those have been figuring their shit out more over the last few years, so welcome to the club, guys. And I would even argue that some cases of gender non-conforming and non-passing people would also qualify. Yet, for some reason, we went ahead and instead of, you know, freeing society from the idea of gender as a package deal, we just made a third one, <laughs> which is equally inadequate and narrow defined and not fitting for most people. Like, we just made a third one. Why did we do this? Why, why did we do this? Guys, guys, this was not the point. This was never the point. Why would, why, why? Like, don't get me wrong, some people fit this and that's perfectly fine and they're still valid. That's not the point. The point is that it, it breaks my heart because we have now people who clearly would qualify under the non-binary umbrella. Like, Noelle Stevenson, in her top surgery comic, she describes herself as something uh, that I would classify as somewhere in the pan-gender or gender-fluid range, which would qualify. Or the gender-fluid people that were on Anthony Padilla's show recently. Do you find that some people assume that gender fluidity is the same as being non-binary? And there are people out there that identify as non-binary mm -hmm. and gender-fluid at the same time, mm -hmm. but there are also people out there that identify as non-binary like all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's not fluid, they're right. always non-binary. I think the, the gender fluid, just like the way that it fluctuates and it can go any way or the other is mm -hmm. what makes it an important difference. Yeah. <laughs> not just like sticking to one like set or like a couple. Right, so you feel like non-binary is set as non-binary. Yeah. While gender fluid is anything in between yeah. without ever really ever being set. Mm -hmm. Who actively say they don't identify as non-binary because they think that it's this like third gender or genderless they them thing specifically, which again it isn't. <laughs> like it's also that but it's also so many other things because it's an umbrella. A portion of the community has hogged the umbrella and left out everybody else in the rain and that's not okay. We got the damn umbrella to begin with so none of us would have to be out in the rain anymore. So the point of this video is not only to point out the problem 
but also to hopefully offer at least a beginning of a solution. The issue is the idea that non-binary is one specific thing rather than the variety of things that it can be. And I think this comes from just like a lack of examples and understanding of what those other kinds of non-binary can be because I feel like a lot of the people, including myself, hello, who are, <laughs> have been, you know, pu public non-binary figures tend to be either for gender or a gender or not specified. So I feel like the people who have claimed that label most publicly haven't really fit into the definitions of other things. And I'm not, right, I'm not here to tell you to bring back fucking Tumblr Mogai nonsense, right? Like, no, 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 we don't need that. That was, that was bad. We're not gonna do that. What I want us to do is to just have like a few categories within the umbrella, right? Where no matter what your specifics are, you can kind of categorize you with yourself within those so we can have order. I like order. I like graphs. <laughs> Did you know that I like graphs? <laughs> if you don't, you're about to find out. So you know how we talk about sexuality in an uh, asexual and a romantic inclusive way by not only talking about orientation, but also talking about intensity. So what I'm proposing is we do a similar thing for gender as well. Say hello to my gender diamond. This is my gender diamond. <laughs> I'm trying to come up with a girl's best, diamonds are a girl's best friend joke and I can't. If you can't, put it in the comments. I'd love to read them. <laughs> so this is my gender diamond. Hello. So basically, statically, we have differentiating between single kinds of gender horizontally and then amount of gender vertically. So from genderlessness to genderfulness, which is usually like multiple genders or all gender or whatever, right? Mind you, agender people still have all the three aspects of sex expression and gender role in terms of like they still use pronouns and have a body and stuff like that even if they don't feel the gender in the inside but we all still live in a gendered society that's still gonna look at you and even if you don't see a gender there they're, they're still gonna project one onto you and finally gender fluidity is any movement across the gender diamond which is usually on the horizontal but it can be in any kind of way that it's gonna move and fluctuate. So for simplicity's sake, we're gonna include all kinds of significant fluctuations in this category. This graph describes kind of like how people's gender functions to them. It's useful to understand how people function. In practice, it doesn't make that much of a difference. What makes a difference is these five categories and e within each of these categories you will generally find, regardless of the specifics, roughly the same range of like what people want in terms of their three aspects. You know, what, what they might want to transition as and so on and so forth generally will be similar across these categories. Yes, words. I'm great at them. In conclusion, if you are still figuring stuff out, don't feel the need to overdefine yourself because of this. Like, if if you don't know yet, that's perfectly fine. Keep using non-binary. Like, I, I know I used to identify as all sorts of fucking things that I did not end up being because I didn't know any better and I hadn't unlearned all the binary sh yet and I didn't realize that mild fluctuations in how bad your dysphoria is from day to day are perfectly normal even for gen for non-gender fluid people and gender fluidity is just like the more s severe fluctuations version if that makes sense. I, I do think that we should still all use non-binary. It's not about not using it. Non-binary is a perfectly fine label to give your other box, right? If you do know what your deal is, try and specify more often. I know that sounds vague as fuck, but hey man, I'm just the idea guy, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I am for gender, and I will try and do better for my siblings, and I hope that some of y'all will try and do the same. So I do actually have a suggestion for something that we could try and start with, which is, hey, maybe let's do better in pronouns. Like, first of all, they, them is a very kind of English-speaking, specific phenomenon. Most languages do not have the privilege of having just gender neutral language and a for gender pronoun to begin with. The reason I use he and she pronouns is because I speak like six languages and I don't f***ing have the energy to bother with sh right? So yeah, just, just, just check, check your tiny bit of privilege that you have there, okay? Just, just check it every once in a while. Just check it. Second of all, I don't want to hear sh like, oh, I'm a, I'm a they, them. <laughs> no, you are not a they, them. You use they, them. Pronouns and identity are not synonymous. If you imply that being a they, them is synonymous to being non-binary, being third gender, being whatever, you are incorrect. <laughs> 
because there is plenty of us who do not use they them and you are invalidating. Uh, I don't like the word invalidating. Why did Tumblr have to ruin that? You are not being very nice to the rest of us. Oh well. <laughs> And finally, just respect people's pronouns. If a non-binary person is not using they, them, even if it is a middle spec non-binary person. This also goes for the allies, by the way. Allies who are watching this, this also goes for y'all. Okay, I, I have had to listen to too many freaking D&D shows where they're just throwing about they, them pronouns as if that's gonna, like, be the peak of inclusive language. That's not how what inclusive language is about. Okay, inclusive pronoun use is about respecting people's pronouns no matter what they are. I know people like me who use multiple pronouns, who use not they, them, and are still non-binary. I know people who are binary leaning, who use she and they or he and they. I know someone who uses it pronouns. And it took me a while to get used to that, but I still f***ing try to respect its pronouns. Respect people's pronouns. I feel like this has gotten very ranty. This is not meant to incite infighting again. You don't have to listen to anything I say. Even if you do follow what I say, be be nice to fellow bees, even if they're being problematic and ignorant about what their actions might reinforce negatively, and you try to correct them, still be nice. Still be nice about it, because they are still fellow minority people, and we all go through enough already, and infighting doesn't help anyone. So we need to be a united front against the real problems. It will. In summary, non-binary isn't one thing, it's an umbrella term. It's for everybody who's outside the binary, as the name suggests. Be nice to your goddamn siblings, don't leave them out in the rain, and even if the problematic ones need to get corrected, still be nice to them, because they're still your siblings, so. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, pl please subscribe. Go check out some of my other videos if you're interested. They're, they're, they're great, definitely. Yay. So yeah, un until next time. Cheers. Bye-bye. So, we've reached the end of the video, so I get to rant now, okay? <laughs> so German, G German recently did a real big fuck up in terms of gender equality, because basically, right, the way their gendered language works so far is usually there is, like, the neutral form, which is also used as the male form, and then they have, like, because feminism, they have a ending that uh, you just attach to the word, and then it becomes the female form from that, right? So it's either you have the neutral and masculine form, or you are s using the specifically female form. So as a non-binary person, I use the neutral form, which happens to also be the masculine one, because I'm like, well, I'm not specifically female, so I'm not gonna f***ing use that one, right? You kind of have the opposite happening in English, where like, for example, like, female actors aren't going by actress anymore as much, even though that would be the female specific form, they are going by just an actor. In German it's like the opposite, where it's like the 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 great feminist thing to have have their own form, right? But the thing is, now now the, the cis and binaries have taken it too far in that they have now put it in the Duden, which is like the equi the German equivalent of like the Oxford English Dictionary kind of thing. They've put it in a Duden that the neutral form is now the specifically male form, and then you add after that the female form because equality, and it's like, hello, I exist, which one am I supposed to use now if that one's no longer the f***ing neutral form, dumbasses? Did you ever think of that? That's not how gender equality works, that's not how gender lib works, stupid <sighs> English just does it. English just doesn't have different forms, and it's wonderful. Appreciate that. Appreciate the lack of struggle. Hey, hey, Duden, if you fucking listening, fix it. <laughs> fix it. Everybody, get into the Duden's comment. <laughs> Tell them off. No, don't, 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 don't. We can't. We cannot afford to pull a Brendan on this. So.